Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we will create a starting template that is very lightweight, very simple. You can remember it from maybe Unreal 4 when we started a new project in Unreal 4. We had a very simple template that you can basically, you know, fire it up and start working on. So in our template, we're going to disable Lumen, we're going to disable Nanite, and we're going to save it as a project that you can copy it over, rename it, whatever you need to start a new project. And you can have a nice, clean, lightweight uh, way of starting a project, okay? So in order to do that, let's create a new project, okay? Because this is one that I already created. So let's create a new one. So go to new project, which is a blank. And let's give it a name, no lumen, to it, like a tutorial, okay? Perfect. And I'll choose a different location. Okay, no lumen, create. So this is default Unreal blank project and you have uh, many things in it enabled. You have enabled Lumen, many things going on in the scene. There's volumetric clouds and et cetera, et cetera. And you can ask yourself a question. Is that something I'd like to start or not? So rather than starting this way, one other way to start a project, like, you know, little experiments and things when you're learning Unreal is basically have a very, very minimalistic template and start enabling thing along as you need them rather than just disabling them back. So for example, all the time when I start a project, I will have to, you know, disable Lumen, disable Nanite and do all the settings. So it's better to create a different templates and you can use them whenever you need it. All right. Because to be honest, I don't like this starting template. It's too much for me. I don't like how does it look. Has it too many things, including world partition. Yes. There is a way that you can basically go and when you're creating a new project, you can choose, for example, a film and you can choose a blank map here. I don't like it either. It's not exactly what I want. So because it has too many things, I want to create very simple, lightweight uh, map that I can use. OK, so that's what we're going to do. So, OK, we created a blank project. This is our start. The second thing we're going to do, let's bring our content browser and let's create a new folder in the content. That's where we're going to keep our map and maybe a static light uh, information when we're going to bake the light. So let's create a new folder. Let's call it start light. Just going to make it a little bit smaller. Hopefully you can see all the names. We're going to get inside and we're going to create a new level. Let's call it a start template. Light. All right. It's up to you how you name the things and we're going to open it and we're going to save select it. OK, so let's start filling it up. All right. So I'm going to to bring content browsers on this side and we're going to bring few things from the engine. The first thing we want to bring is the floor. Now, you cannot type here a floor because it's not in this in the search for the place actors. Uh, we have to look in our engine. Floor is basically simple geometry. We've already shaded applied. It's very good for the template. You can have your own geometry. You can use the box, whatever you'd like. I want to use the one from the engine. Now, to grab the things from the engine folder, you have to have it visible. If you do not, you can go to settings and you can check the show engine content. OK, then we go to content and we can just make it a little bit bigger and we go to map templates. And we can grab our SM template map floor. OK, and we bring it in. And lo and behold, we obviously don't see anything because we do not have any lighting in a scene. OK, so let's just switch for a time being to wireframe wireframe. OK, so at least, you know, objects not select. I can see I can see my camera movement and rotation. Let's just zero it out position of it. Now bring the lights. Let's do that. So the first light we want, we want to bring a sky sphere. Now we could go and bring the sky atmosphere, but the thing is, this is too much. It has uh, too many options. I want something super light, super simple, as we had, for example, in Unreal 4. We can grab it from the engine. So basically in engine sky, we have our BP sky sphere. This is the old school way, super simple, super light way very fast and it does the job. So we're going to bring our sky sphere and we're going to zero it out because we just want a pivot point to be in the middle of a scene. That's really cool. Of course, we don't see anything because we are in a wireframe. 
let's switch to the live mode. And lo and behold, we almost can see things, right? That's almost good. Now, let's just save it and let's bring that directional light. Oh, we type directional light and here you go. Now, we're not done yet because we do have a enable lumen, we do have enable nanite, and we do have a enable auto exposure, many other things that we want to disable and tweak to our need. But let's just set up lighting for... Uh, so first of all, let's just select a BP sky sphere. Let's change few settings. First of all, let's just choose directional light as a directional light actor. So the sky sphere can get any information about the light direction and etc. That's really cool. Well, I'm going to disable any clouds. So we're just going to do opacity of the clouds to zero and opacity to the start brights to zero. I want a very simple scene to just play the things. I don't want any clouds and etc. If I'm going to work on the clouds, then I'm going to bring them in. Okay. But I want to have a nice starting point for my, you know, playing with the engine. Now let's tweak the rendering setting for the project. So we go to our project settings. If you see my Unreal looking a little bit differently, the theme for the Unreal, you can go on my coffee page and you can download the theme with some uh, little, with basically a little plugin that changed the look of the content browsers for Unreal to be more readable. Okay, and the settings you want to look for, it's rendering, okay? So we're going to disable things to make our project um, very light, simple, uh, fast to render, and you can disable as many things you want, but first I'm going to show you how to disable Lumen and Nanite. So mobile I'm going to ignore in this case. Uh, yes, we want a texture streaming to be enabled. We don't want a virtual texture support in this case. But the third thing we're going to disable, it's a global illumination method. We're going to say none. Now, I just want to also mention that in the future videos, we're going to go through many rendering settings and options and you know technical sides of it and we're going to explain it i just want to say that a screen space rendering of, of global illumination is a still viable method it's not that it's you know curse or or super unusable or whatever it's still viable method on a low end pcs that actually can give you a good result so it depends what you're trying to do uh you can still use it it's still totally fine method to use Obviously, it's not gives you that such a great result as a lumen. It is a still a method. That's why it still is. It was always in beta, uh, so just you can ignore it. But it's been using productions for many, many years by many studios. We can set it to none for now. Actually, I want to set it to none because I want to disable the lumen. So let's set it also the reflection method to none. Now we do have another options. We're gonna talk about them in the future. But for now, we're just turning off the lumen and turning off nanite. You can see that we can still have a use the hardware ray tracing when it's available. It's because we do have a support for the hardware ray tracing on. So let's just disable that. Now, I want to be sure that I'm deciding when we're going to use the ray tracing. So that's why I'm disabling all of those features now. And then when I need them, I'm going to enable them. Okay. We've been prompted with info to restart Unreal, but we're not done yet with disabling all the features. Okay. The next options, a shadow map method. I want to switch to the standard shadow maps. Since we are not using Nanite, I really like shadow maps. Let's just go with the normal shadow maps. Also, we're going to disable Nanite. Uh, distance field voxel density. Well, this is the thing. Like, I want to keep the generating mesh distance fields on. That That is useful for, for ambient occlusion. And 0 0.2 value it's okay. You can go a little bit higher, but I think 0.4 is good for now to to leave. I want to allow static lighting because I want to have a project. Uh, for me, light project is a project where I can actually bake lighting because baking lighting is still viable method of lighting in the scenes. It's totally fine. We not always have to go with the dynamic lighting. And we're going to talk about static lighting, dynamic lighting in the future. And another option also to disable ray trace, translucent refractions. We're gonna disable that. It should not pick it up, but let's just disable it just in case if we have any um, refractions. So ray trace, translucent refractions, we're gonna disable that as well. And the next section is we're gonna keep the bloom ambient occlusion on. I like to keep the bloom. I like to keep the ambient occlusion. Um, those ones are pretty cheap. Auto exposure, we're gonna turn it off. It's basically, 
Um, it is not very. It just do not to distract you when you're playing in your scene. You know, you 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 trying different gameplay mechanics and etc. You don't want to deal with the auto exposure. Whenever you light in your scene, this is different. This is different topic. So auto exposure is you're turning it on, but you're really gonna do a proper lighting of your scene. And this is a big topic: the how to approach lighting of a scene. Okay, we can talk about it in the future. For now, we obviously turning off auto exposure. And now important thing, we're gonna turn off anti-aliasing. Now there's different methods for anti-aliasing and we're gonna talk about them in the future, what they are, which, uh, how they works. But the temporal super resolution is basically rendering your scene in a lower resolution then upscaling it up. We're gonna set it to none. We don't wanna have any temporal. It's, it leaves also a little bit of a smearing when you move the camera, etc. Uh, we don't want that. So we set the anti-aliasing method to none. Uh, we don't have an MSA, so you basically can say MSA to no MSA and the light units, we're gonna say it to set it to lumens. The lumens are much easier to deal with um, lights. And watch the what is the candelas? We're gonna talk about it in the future, and etc. Okay, but for now, let's just set up to lumen. Okay, we wanna have an early Z pass that decide automatically is totally viable option. And everything else, it's totally fine to leave. What we can do now, we can restart our scene. But before we do that, just one, one extra thing is that if you go to top of your project, you go to all settings, sorry, not all settings, you go to the maps and modes. Uh, let's switch our map from the open world to the start template light, the one we created. So I have, when we start our project, basically it's always gonna open it, okay? So we do have our map saved. Obviously now our, our map is now too bright. We're gonna fix it in a second, okay? And we're just gonna restart. Okay, our project just restarted, but we get lots of error messages that Nana is enabled, but cannot render. The reason why is we do have to add one extra option to our config file to have a Nana disable for sure. So we open our project folder, we go to config and we go to the default engine. And here we can find our Nanite setting, which is a Nanite project enabled. Okay, this is false, but we still have to disable Nanite. And you just save it and you have to restart your project. Okay, and now when the project restarted, you can see we do not have any warnings. So actually, this is a scene where Nanite and Lumen is disabled. Okay, but the scene is a little bit too bright. Let's just uh, correct that. So also, we need in our scene, we need a post process volume. And we can zero it out, but let's just move a little bit on the side. So it's easy to select, to be honest. In our case, the position of it doesn't matter because we're going to make it infinite extent. So it's kind of like an infinite uh, sized post-process volume. Nothing changed because we haven't changed any settings. And the first settings we're going to change is going to have to be exposure compensation. So in the lens, we go to exposure. And exposure and compensation we're gonna set to zero and lo and behold we're gonna save this scene this is your starting scene where you can just start uh, playing with your gameplay mechanics you know basic shaders and etc it's super fast doesn't have uh, any temporal upscaling just before we go further i just want to bring this uh, floor a little bit up so it doesn't intersect that top layer doesn't intersect with a grid what I also like about the floor that every square is a is a one meter by one meter, so it reflects the size of the grid, and that whatever you're putting, you can actually just easily get the idea how big the objects are. Now, just the last thing before we finish, the one thing I'd like to add to our you know folder that with our start kind of like a started content folder for our template is to add the calibration cube. And if we go to the engine, we select content and we type calib. Calib. And we just find that, oh, this is the calibration cube. Yeah, this is the cube that we can use in the future for, um, you know, light calibration and etc. It's, we will create our own calibration uh, geometries and etc. But this is good starting point to have. It's a nice geometry, whatever you need it to just judge the lighting. It's it's good to pop it in and, and have it always handy. Now, you don't want always gonna browse in your engine content to bring it in. 
So what we can do, we can basically duplicate the one from the engine. So we just, as we found it in the engine, we just right click, choose duplicate. And we're just gonna type at the end underscore my. Or maybe just M Y at the end. And we're gonna not save it here. We're just gonna move it to the star light and move it here. So when we jump here, we can remove this one from the scene because this one is pointing to the um, to the content from the editor. And in this case, if we're just gonna clean up search bar, we do have a simple folder, starlight folder. So whenever we're gonna start a project, we're gonna have starlight folder that you can use. You can create new folders in the content and at the end you can remove this whole folder. If you don't like it, you can keep it, whatever. You can duplicate it however you like it. You can be tempted and say, hey Camille, I would like to have that project as a new template. Like you have it here, for example, no lumen light. Um, and maybe you remember in a pass in Unreal, you can basically go to your um, C drive if you're on the Windows, uh, Unreal templates, and you can basically uh, move your project here, create a template config, and etc. Now, the thing is, currently Epic, because of the child proofing and everything, they always enable Lumen, they always enable Nanite, and they're changing a few other settings. So, unfortunately, you cannot easily add your template uh, here. The one way to do it is to you have to implement it um, template uh, project definition um, class, uh, and that's going to be uh, it's outside of the scope of this tutorial, basically. So yes, you can do that. You can still have your custom template where you kind of, uh, you know, specifically hard coding what settings have to be enabled for the rendering. It's unfortunately not easy as it was in the past that we can just copy our project and just, you know, have it visible here. Unreal is always enabling Lumen and nanite by default right now and it's forcing you to do that all the time this information is hard coded in a browser code there's no way unfortunately to disable it uh, at least you're writing your your separated class in the plugin but it's not really a big deal because this is our project no lumen tutorial right and we can use that as our starting point for any new projects. How would you do that? Okay, let's close the Unreal and let's just go inside our project and we can do as it's going to be as uh, this is our template. We can just delete save intermediate and derivative cache. We can just delete it. We can just see that we have a starlight, the the folder that we created, configs. You can still add the configs if you need anything. So this is our starting project. And you know what? If you have any template, project you can always give it exclamation mark at the beginning um you don't have to but this is just easy way to keep um distinguished from other projects name and it's always on the top when we're sorting by name now if when you're starting a new project and you just want to use that template you can just copy paste it just rename it my awesome game for example we go inside we rename it here and that's it and this is your awesome game project now when we jump when we open it, you can see the awesome game is open and boom, we just have our template easy to start ready. And we have all our rendering settings disabled, like Lumen disabled and Nanite, which is amazing. That's the way how you disable Lumen and upcoming videos. We're going to talk in details about the technical side of the lightning and what the different things does and how they're implemented.